Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Began, congratulations on your nomination. Uh, I want to start by, by talking about a topic you and I discussed uh, yesterday afternoon, uh, which is Nord Stream 2. In your judgment, what would the consequences be for Russia, for Europe, and for America if Nord Stream 2 is completed and goes online? Senator, as I said to you yesterday, uh, at, uh, and I will affirm here, it is our policy uh, in the United States government that we, are, uh, we oppose the completion of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Uh, we think that it will add leverage uh, to Russia's ability to uh, bring political influence to bear upon many of our partners and allies uh, in Europe. It will also potentially cause economic damage to Ukraine uh, by bypassing Ukraine with important energy supplies. Um, more importantly, it, it seems to me that it will also uh, cement in place a certain status quo that uh, I think needs to fundamentally change, which is that Russia should be engaged in a transparent, legitimate way with our European friends and allies, but they shouldn't be given undue influence, and certainly not under the circumstances in which we see Russian uh, policies being guided today, which is to actively subvert many of our friends and allies in Europe, and, and I think this pipeline is simply one more tool they'll be able to use. Well, I agree with you. Nord Stream 2, if completed, would help Russia, it would strengthen Putin, it would generate billions of dollars that could be used to fuel Russian aggression, and at the same time, it would hurt all of Europe by making Western Europe more dependent on Russian energy, more subject to economic coercion, more subject to economic blackmail. I think it is better for all parties concerned for Europe to be able to get energy, energy from sources that won't use it as economic blackmail. Uh, and were Europe to be importing uh, energy from the United States, that means jobs here at home uh, instead of enriching Putin. As you know, this committee passed my bi bipartisan legislation on Nord Stream 2 by an overwhelming bipartisan vote, 20 to 2. Uh, that legislation is right now pending on the floor. I'm hopeful that the, ha that the Senate will take it up and that the House will pass it. Our window for getting this done is rapidly shrinking. Our window for getting this done, the current projections are the pipeline will com be completed by January, which means we have maybe two months to get this done, and if we fail to get it done, we will have vastly strengthened Putin's hands at the expense of, of, of the rest of the free world. I hope that the Senate acts, takes it up on the floor and passes it, and the House does as well. But there is an alternative way to get the job done, which is under CATSA. The administration already has the authority to impose these sanctions. There is right now an active debate within the administration about whether or not to use that authority. The legislation that has overwhelming bipartisan support is narrowly tailored. It is designed like a scalpel to stop this pipeline and to do nothing more. There are five companies on the face of the planet that have the technology to lay the deep sea pipeline. The Russians lack that technology themselves. They've contracted with two European companies. If Congress passes the legislation or if the administration simply uses its existing authority under CATSA to implement the same policy, to sanction any company that lays this deep sea pipe, Nord Stream 2 will stop in its tracks. So I, so I want to encourage you, Mr. Began, to go back to the administration, to the debate that is occurring as we speak, and make abundantly clear that giving speeches saying the administration is opposed to Nord Stream 2 is a completely empty gesture. If the administration is not willing to act under its statutory authority, it has right now to stop the pipeline. The strength of the rhetoric, the strength of the denunciations of Nord Stream 2 will be measured by one simple test. Did we allow the pipeline to be built or not? And the administration, with the flip of a switch, can stop this pipeline. And so I would encourage you to carry that message back. There are voices within the administration that are resisting using this authority. And I think those arguments, and in fact, the arguments they are posing is they hypothesize that, well, maybe Russia has ships that might be able to lay this pipeline after all. 
Now, my team thinks that they are incorrect in their assessment. But even if they are incorrect, even if they are correct, the worst outcome is that imposing the sanctions on the companies laying the deep sea pipe would delay Nord Stream 2 by over a year and cost billions more to Putin delaying the benefits. The best outcome, and the outcome that I think is likely, is we stop the pipeline altogether. Either way, that is a win-win, so I would encourage you to carry that to your colleagues. Thank you, Senator. And as you said yesterday, you've also had a chance to discuss this with Secretary Pompeo. I have not seen him since then. He's on travel currently, uh, but I assure you I will follow his lead on this. Thank you, Senator. Uh, and uh, I'm sure you know, uh, Mr. Began, that uh, Senator Cruz's passion on this is not limited to Senator Cruz himself. This is widespread here in this institution. Uh, he speaks for the vast majority, I think, of the United States Congress on this uh, issue.